What is an emission line spectrum? Light of a few, distinct wavelengths produced by a hot, low-density gas. What is the zeroth law of thermodynamics? If objects A and B are in equilibrium and B and C are in equilibrium, then A and C are also in equilibrium. How are thermographs used? Thermographs which detect the amount of infrared radiation emanating from objects or regions. Use colors to display the temperature on an image. Typically, red indicates the warmest temperatures, while blue indicates cooler temperatures. Thermographs are used throughout science but are well noted for their use in detecting humans in wilderness areas, identifying areas of homes that need more insulation, and in measuring the temperature over regions of Earth. What is used to reduce red eye? Red eye reduction is a feature found on many modern cameras. It simply attempts to constrict a person's pupil so that not as much light can be reflected back from the retina. There are several methods of accomplishing this. One method is to have a smaller light that illuminates before the real flash. Another method is to have a quick burst of five or six mini flashes that cause the pupil to contract before the picture is taken. What is physics? The study of the structure of the natural world that seeks to explain natural phenomena in terms of a comprehensive theoretical structure in mathematical form, from the Greek physis, meaning nature. What is a wheel and axle? Simple machine. If the radius of the axle is A and the radius of the wheel is W, then if the input force is applied to the wheel, the output force is given by Foutput equals Foutput, with A. What is thermodynamics and statistical mechanics? studies how temperature affects matter and how heat is transferred. Thermodynamics deals with macroscopic objects. Statistical mechanics concerns the atomic and molecular motions of larger numbers of particles. Is it true that lightning never strikes the same place twice?
This is absolutely false. The Empire State Building in New York City is just one. Example of where lightning has struck more than once. In some thunderstorms, the tower on the Empire State Building has been hit several dozen times. What are airships used for? Since the first airship flight in 1852, by Henry Gifford in France. The dirigible, or airship, was used predominantly for military purposes. In the First and Second World Wars airships were used for bombing and surveillance on both sides of the Atlantic. Commercial passenger transportation on airships was conducted for only a few years. While today's blimps are used for advertising and for televising sporting events from high elevations. What is an amplitude? The distance on a wave from the midpoint to the point of maximum displacement, crest or compression. Why is the ocean blue? There are two major reasons why the ocean and most bodies of water appear blue. The first can be observed by looking at the water on a cloudy day and then on a sunny day. There is a rather large difference in how blue the water appears to be on the two different days. Because the water acts as a mirror for the sky. So on a sunny day with a blue sky, the water will have a richer blue color than on a cloudy day. The second reason why bodies of water have a blue appearance is that water scatters short wavelength light more than the longer. In fact, water absorbs some orange, red, and the very long wavelength infrared. As a result it absorbs more energy in the sunlight, increasing its temperature. The much larger amounts of reflected, short wavelength light results in a crisp blue colored body of water. Some bodies of water may take on a more greenish or at times a brownish or black color. Usually this is due to other elements in the water such as algae, silt, and sand. Runoff water from glaciers is very white due to the tiny grains of silt in the water. Still, in the majority of cases, water looks blue. What is a Faraday cage? cage or metal grating that can shield electrical charge by gathering charges on outer shell of the cage. What is a candela, CD? Unit of measurement of luminous intensity. What is a Leyden jar?
device consisting of an insulating jar with conductors on inner and outer surfaces. Stores charges. Modern version is a capacitor. What is instantaneous speed and how is it measured? If you reduce the time interval between measurements of position, both the distance moved and the time required are reduced. If the speed is constant, then the ratio of the two does not change. Instantaneous speed is defined as the limit of distance divided by time interval when the time interval is reduced to zero. In practice you can't reach the limit. But it is possible to measure positions every thousandths of a second. There are indirect methods of measuring instantaneous speed. For example, police use the Doppler shift, that will be discussed later in this book. That is, the change in frequency that occurs when the radio or light wave is reflected from a moving object. What is harmonic? Mode of vibration that is a whole number multiple of the fundamental mode. The first harmonic is the fundamental frequency. The second harmonic is twice its frequency, etc. How is uranium enriched today? Today ultracentrifuges are used for uranium enrichment. A centrifuge is routinely used in medical labs to separate materials of different density. The test tubes are spun rapidly and the denser materials move away from the center of rotation because it requires more centripetal force to pull them toward the center. A gas ultracentrifuge uses a rapidly rotating drum to separate the UF6 with the two isotopes. Gas centrifuges supply about 54% of the enriched uranium today. Each centrifuge is a more effective separator than a stage in a gaseous diffusion plant and requires only 6% of the electrical energy of gaseous diffusion. How are acceleration and force related? If you have a miniature toy car or even a smooth hard ball that can roll. On a smooth level surface you can explore the effects of force on motion. When the toy car or ball is motionless, give it a gentle tap with your finger. Note how it moves. Now. While it is moving give it a second, then a third or even a fourth gentle tap. What happened? You saw that when. The toy car was at rest and a force was exerted on it, it started to move in the direction of the force. When a force was applied in the direction of its motion, it sped up. Each additional tap caused it to speed up more. What do you think would happen if you were able to exert a constant force on it while it was moving? It's difficult to do. 
but try it. You can conclude from this exercise that a force applied in the direction of motion causes it to speed up, or accelerate in the direction of the force. If the direction of motion is called the positive direction, then both the force and acceleration would also be positive. Now start the toy car moving and give it a gentle tap in the direction opposite its motion. Don't tap it so hard that it stops or changes direction. See if you can tap it two or three times, again without stopping the car. What did? You observe? You should be able to conclude that a force applied in the direction. Opposite its motion causes it to slow down, or accelerate in the direction of the force. If you had defined the direction of motion as positive, then the force and acceleration would both be negative. What happens when no force is applied? You saw in the beginning that when the toy car started at rest it remained at rest until you exerted a force on it. What happened while it was moving? It probably slowed down some. With the amount depending on the condition of the toy car and the hardness of the surface. But, the amount it slowed was certainly much less than. It was when you exerted a force in the opposite direction. What happens if your car is on ice? Often then the friction between the tires and the ice is so small that the wheels can exert enough backward force on the ice for the ice to exert the force needed to accelerate the car. Note that friction instead of being a bad thing, as suggested earlier, is needed in this case. How does a synthesizer imitate any musical instrument? A synthesizer is an electronic device that generates, alters, and combines a variety of waveforms to produce complex sounds. Often a piano-type keyboard allows the musician to select the notes to be constructed. Synthesizers may use electronic circuits to create the tones or use. Software that controls a circuit that converts a digital number to a voltage. Some synthesizers use a computer rather than a keyboard to select the notes. The computer can then control electronic circuits through the MIDI interface. The most common method of creating the synthesized sounds is to use a frequency. Modulated synthesis that creates higher harmonics that match those of the musical instrument being imitated. Or create an entirely new musical sound. Instruments also have characteristic attacks, sustained times, and decays. Attack describes how fast the amplitude rises from zero to its full value. Sustained times describe how long the tone amplitude remains the same. And decay describes how the amplitude decreases at the end of the played note. Synthesizers can create hundreds of different sounds, typically called voices. What is a strong nuclear force?
force within nucleus that acts between protons and protons. Protons and neutrons, and neutrons, and neutrons, all with the same strength. What is the modern day version of a Leyden jar? The capacitor is the modern version of the Leyden jar. Like the jar, it consists of two conductors separated by an insulator. The insulators used can be air, a thin plastic film, or a coating of oxide on the metallic surface. One use of a capacitor is to store the energy needed to fire a flash lamp on a camera. A battery-powered circuit slowly charges the capacitor. When the flash lamp is triggered the capacitor's energy is quickly transferred to the lamp. Creating a brief, intense flash of light. Capacitors are also used in electronic devices from telephones. To televisions to store energy and reduce changes in voltage. Why are water towers needed on tall buildings? A typical home requires water pressures of 50 to 100 psi. City. Water systems use pumps to maintain that pressure in the pipes. Vertical pipes are needed to supply the upper floors with water. Each foot of height reduces the pressure by 0.443 psi. Auxiliary. Pumps at various floors can provide the needed increase in pressure. An alternative is to put a large storage tank on the roof and use pumps to fill it. It then supplies the building with water under pressure due to the height of the tank. It also allows the pumps to be run to fill it at night when electricity rates may be cheaper. In addition, it provides a backup source of water in case of fire. Small towns, which often use wells as a water source. Use water towers to store water in case there is an interruption in electrical service. It also allows the town to use smaller pumps because the tower can supply the pressure during peak water demands. A typical daily water use is 500 gallons per minute. But this can rise to 2000 gallons a minute in peak times. A tower typically stores one day's worth of water. Water towers such as these in New York City are often placed on top of tall buildings. This way, the force of gravity supplies the water pressure needed to deliver water throughout the building. What is a magnetic field? Region around a magnet that causes forces on magnetic materials or other magnets. What discovery did James Clerk Maxwell make that depended on the work of Ersted, Faraday, and Ampere? In an earlier chapter we have seen that charges create electric fields. In this chapter we have seen that moving charges, that is, currents. 
create magnetic fields and that changing magnetic fields produce electric fields. In the 1860s Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell, 1831-1879, added a crucial additional connection. Changing electric fields can produce magnetic fields. With that idea Maxwell recognized that these relationships meant that electric and magnetic fields could move through space. The fields move through space as transverse waves that are perpendicular to each other. Maxwell calculated the speed and found that it was equal to the speed of light. He published his results in 1864 and a textbook on electromagnetism in 1873. In 1881 Oliver Heaviside wrote Maxwell's famous four equations in the form they are used today. In 1888 Heinrich Hertz, 1857-1894, transmit electromagnetic waves across his laboratory. Confirming Maxwell's theoretical work. What is the uncertainty principle? Limitation to simultaneous knowledge of position and momentum of particle, dx dps equals h slash 4p. Equivalent equation for energy and time. How do fluids model electric charges? How could these results be explained? Charles Frangois Dufay, 1698-1739, concluded that there were two types of electricity. He named them vitreous, meaning glass, precious stones, and raisinous, amber, sealing wax. Silk. Friction separates the two types. When they are combined they neutralize each other. Jean-Antoine Nollet modeled these types as two fluids, each composed of particles that repelled each other. Charging amber gave it an excess of raisinous fluid. Charging glass with silk gave it an excess of vitreous fluid. When the two were touched together the fluids combined with each other leaving the objects unchanged argued. Benjamin Franklin believed there was only one fluid. When glass was rubbed the fluid filled the glass. When amber was rubbed the fluid left the amber. He called an object with an excess of fluid positive and one with too little fluid negative. When they were touched the fluid flowed from the glass to the amber. Leaving each with its proper amount of fluid. The flow was likened to water in a river. The electrical tension, difference in potential, and electrical current were analogous to the difference of water levels between two points and of the amount of water transferred. Are there other ways pulleys can be used? Two or more pulleys, on fixed axles, can be connected together with a belt. If the two pulleys are of different diameters, then the one with the smaller diameter will turn faster, 
and thus it can exert a larger torque. In your automobile one or more pulley and belt systems are used to deliver torques from the engine to the valve crankshaft. The water pump, the air conditioning compressor, and the alternator. Continuously variable automobile transmissions are used in a few modern cars to connect the engine to the drive shaft. The torque that can be delivered by an engine depends on the rotational speed. The torque is maximum at an intermediate speed. A transmission is designed to allow the engine to revolve at a speed where it can deliver torque to the drive shaft. The axle and the wheels that are revolving at a variety of speeds. When the auto is accelerating from a stop the wheel rotation speed is slow. And so the transmission needs to match a large diameter pulley attached to the engine to a smaller one connected to the drive shaft. On the other hand, when the auto is traveling at a high speed, the engine can revolve at the same or even a smaller rate than the drive shaft. What are fusion weapons? Even before the nuclear bomb was completed, some physicists at Los Alamos started work on what they called the super, a weapon based on fusion. After the war was over there were heated discussions, both scientific and political, about the wisdom of developing a new, even more destructive weapon. Due to tensions in the Cold War, both the United States and the Soviet Union embarked on programs to create these weapons, informally called hydrogen bombs. The United States tested such a weapon in 1952, the Soviet Union in 1955, Britain, China, and France are known to have tested fusion bombs. Some aspects of fusion weapons are known while others are still secret. What is known is that the bomb starts with a uranium or plutonium implosion bomb with deuterium and tritium gases inside its core. The neutrons released by the fusion increase the fission of plutonium or uranium, boosting the efficiency of the fission device. The energy released is transferred to a lithium dihydride fusion fuel in a process that remains secret. That undergoes fusion, and the energy released causes fission in a surrounding layer of natural uranium. The Soviet Union exploded a fusion weapon that released the equivalent of 50 million tons of TNT. The most recent effort on weapons development is to decrease the size of the weapons so they can be deployed in smaller delivery rockets. What is geometrical optics? deals with the path that light takes when it encounters mirrors and lenses and the uses of these devices. What other major force can be experienced by structures? A torsion force usually from winds, is responsible for twisting structures. 
buildings, bridges, and towers use cross supports to prevent such forces from damaging the structures. For example, the John Hancock building in Chicago has visible cross supports. What plays the role of mass in rotation? Mass is defined as the net force on an object divided by its acceleration. By analogy, then, the property that takes the place of mass should be the torque divided by angular acceleration. The property is called rotational inertia or the moment of inertia. It depends not only on mass, but on how far the mass is from the axis of rotation. The further the mass is from the axis, the larger the moment of inertia. If you sit on a swiveling stool or chair while holding heavy weights, the further you extend your arms, the more difficult it is for someone to start you rotating. That is, it will require more torque to achieve the same angular acceleration. Who determined that sound needs a medium through which to travel? In the 1660s, English scientist Robert Boyle, 1627-1691 Proved that sound waves need to travel through a medium in order to transmit sound. Boyle placed a bell inside a vacuum and showed that as the air was evacuated from the chamber, the sound of the bell became softer and softer, until there was no sound. Are there uses for alpha decay? The decay of uranium and thorium produces all the helium that exists on Earth. Most of the helium is mixed with natural gas and is extracted from gas wells. It is expensive to separate and store the helium, but, given the increasing needs for this resource. For cooling superconducting magnets used in hospital MRI machines, it is an effort that must be made. Alpha-emitting radioactive elements are used in smoke detectors. The charged alpha particles leaving the element are collected on a metal plate where they produce a small electric current. Smoke scatters the alphas, reducing the current, and triggering the alarm. What is a nuclear reactor? Method of producing electric power where energy released by nuclear. Fission is used to boil water producing steam that turns generators. What is the uncertainty principle? Limitation to simultaneous knowledge of position and momentum of particle, dx dps equals h slash 4p. Equivalent equation for energy and time.
What is geophysics? Study of the forces and energy found within Earth including tectonic plates. Earthquakes, volcanic activity, and oceanography. What happens to a series circuit if more bulbs are added? If more light bulbs or other resistors are placed in a series circuit, there is more resistance in the circuit. And so the current, and the brightness of the lamps would be reduced. What is the history of measurements of the speed of light? In 1638 Galileo, 1564 to 1642, proposed a method of measuring the speed of light. Galileo would have one lamp and an assistant a great distance away would have a second lamp. The assistant was to uncover his lamp immediately when he saw Galileo uncover his own lamp. The speed could then be determined by measuring the time it would. Take the light to travel from Galileo to the assistant and back again. Galileo claimed to have done the experiment several years before 1638 but there was no record of his results. In 1667 the Academy of Sciences in Florence, Italy, carried it out between two observers a mile apart. They reported there was no measurable delay, showing that the speed of light must be extremely rapid. The first measurement of the speed of light in a laboratory was by Hippolyte Armand Fizeau. 1819-1896, in 1849. He used a beam of light that passed through the gaps between teeth of a rapidly rotating wheel was reflected from a mirror 8 kilometers away, and returned to the wheel. The speed of the wheel was increased until the returning. Light passed through the next gap and could be seen. The speed was calculated to be 315,000 kilometers per second. Leon Foucault, 1819-1868, I'm proved on this a year later by using a rotating mirror in place of the wheel and found the speed to be 298,000 km per second. He also used this technique to determine that light travels slower in water than in air. The American physicist Albert Michelson, 1852-1931, greatly improved Foucault's measurement. Using an eight-sided rotating mirror and a plane mirror located on Mount San Antonio. 35 kilometers, 114,800 feet, away from the source on Mount Wilson in California. By measuring the speed of the rotating mirror and the distance between the mirrors. Michelson made the most accurate measurement of the speed of light to that date. In 1907, he was honored by being the first American to win the Nobel Prize in Physics. In 1926 he made a new measurement that yielded 299. 796 km per second with an uncertainty of 4 km per second. After Maxwell published his theory of electromagnetism it became possible to calculate the speed of light indirectly from the relationships between an electric charge 
and its electric field and an electric current and the magnetic field it produces. In 1907 Rosa and Dorsey obtained 299,788 km per second in this way. The uncertainty of 30 km per second made it the most precise measurement to that date. Research on microwaves used in radar during World War Two led to a new method of measuring the speed of light. By 1950 Lewis Essen reported a result of 299,792 km per second. Slightly more precise than Michelson's result. In the 1970s scientists at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Boulder, Colorado succeeded in directly measuring simultaneously the wavelength and the frequency of an infrared laser. From these two measurements they could calculate the speed of light. 299,792.4562 km per second with an uncertainty of only 1.1 meters per second. This new technique prompted an investigation of the length standard. The wavelength of light from the gas krypton. The new techniques discovered that the standard was fuzzy and had to be replaced. In 1983 the Conference Générale de Poids et Missouris decided to fix the speed of light in a vacuum at 299. 792.458 km per second and define the meter as the distance light travels in 1 slash 299792458 of a second. How much energy is needed to change the state of water from ice to water to steam? The amount of energy needed to change phase is called latent heat. The latent heat involved in the transition from solid to liquid is called the latent heat of fusion. While the energy involved in the transition from liquid to gas is called the latent heat of vaporization. For water the latent heat of fusion is 334 kJ slash kg. The latent heat of vaporization is 2265 kJ slash kg. Energy must be added to go from ice to water and water to steam. But if steam condenses to water it produces 2265 kJ for each kilogram of steam condensed. That's the reason that steam burns are so dangerous. Almost all of that energy is transferred to your skin. If water freezes it releases 334 kJ for each kilogram of water frozen. In a freezer that amount of energy must be removed by the freezing mechanism. What is the standard time? The cesium-133 atomic clock is the standard for the second. How is the gravitational field related to force? As was described above, the force of gravity on an object is equal to the object's mass times the gravitational field strength, expressed as F equals mg. Thus if you have a mass of 70 kilograms, 154 pounds, 
the force of gravity on you is 686 newtons. Mass has been defined both in terms of acceleration and gravitational force. How can evaporation be a cooling process? Because evaporation leaves a cooler liquid, the material on which the liquid rests is cooled. Evaporation is an effective way to cool our bodies. Perspiration leaves a coating of water on our skin that evaporates, cooling the skin. Alcohol evaporates more quickly than water and has an even greater cooling effect. For that reasons parents are advised to rub alcohol on the skin of babies who are running dangerously high temperatures. It can reduce the fever and keep the baby out of danger. What is a good insulator of electrical charge? In an insulator the electrons are strongly bound to their nuclei and thus cannot move through the material. Good insulators are nonmetals, such as plastic, wood, stone, and glass. Your skin is a good insulator, unless it is wet. What are the major limitations of gnomons and sundials? This kind of clock cannot be used at night of when the sun doesn't shine. To remedy this problem, timing devices such as notched candles were created. Later, our glasses and water clocks, Clepsidra, became quite popular. The first recorded description of a water clock is from the 6th century BCE. In the 3rd century BCE Tisabias of Alexandria, a Greek inventor, used gears that connected a water clock to a pointer and dial display similar to those in today's clocks. But it wasn't until 1656 when a pendulum was used with a mechanical clock that these clocks kept very accurate time. How much does a sound's intensity diminish as you move away? When the total energy in the sound wave remains the same as the sound spreads. Over a sphere the intensity decreases as the area of the sphere increases. The area of a sphere is proportional to the square of its radius. So the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. That is, Sound intensity diminishes according to the inverse square law. For example, if a person stands 1 meter, 3.3 feet, away from a source. The sound intensity might be an arbitrary unit of 1. If that same person moved so she was 2 meters, 6.6 .6 feet. Away from the source the intensity would be 1 over the square of the distance or again 1 fourth the intensity. Again, if the listener moved 3 meters, 9.8 feet, away. The intensity would be 1 ninth it was at the 1 meter mark.
Does the amplitude of a wave depend on distance from the source? The energy carried in a wave depends on the wave's amplitude and its velocity. Waves can be put into two categories, those that spread, like water waves on a pond. Sound waves, or electromagnetic waves, and those that are confined to a narrow region. Like waves on a rope or electrical oscillations on a wire. A water wave spreads on the surface of a pond, lake, wide river, or ocean. As it spreads its energy is spread over a larger area. So the energy transmitted to a particular location is reduced when the source is farther away. Therefore the amplitude of the water wave is also reduced in proportion to the distance from the source. Sound and electromagnetic waves usually spread in two dimensions. Again, as they spread the energy carried is also spread, so as the distance from the source is increased. The amplitude is decreased, but this time as the square of the distance. On a rope or wire, the wave doesn't spread, but often a different mechanism reduces the amplitude. In a rope there is friction between the fibers, which changes some of its kinetic energy to thermal energy. If a signal is sent through a wire as an oscillating voltage the resistance of the wire will convert some of the electric energy to thermal energy. Reducing the voltage and thus the amplitude of the wave. This loss is reversed by putting amplifiers along the wire. Putting more energy into the wave and increasing its amplitude. What is mechanics? Study of the effect of forces on the motion and energy of physical objects including fluids and granular particles. What is the instantaneous speed, V? Limiting value of distance divided by time interval when the time interval is reduced to zero. How does a pinhole camera work? A pinhole camera is typically made from a box with a small pinhole in one side of the box and a screen on the other side. The pinhole is so small that only a very small number of light rays can go through it. The diagram on page 211 shows how a pinhole creates a reproduction of the object on the screen. Note that it is not an image because light rays do not converge on the screen. Pinhole cameras are easy to make and are often used during solar eclipses because it is very dangerous to look directly at the sun, during an eclipse or otherwise. With the sun at your back, point the hole up toward the sun and View the image of the moon passing in front of the sun on the screen. What is a very large array, VLA?
group of 27 radio telescopes spaced as much as 13 miles apart from each other in Socorro, New Mexico. What is a standing wave? The example used above showed what happened when two single waves going in opposite directions met. A continuous wave is a set of single waves, one after another. You can produce such a wave by shaking one end of a rope up and down at a constant frequency. Now, if the other end of the rope is tied to something that doesn't move, the wave will be reflected back toward you. If you shake the rope at the correct frequencies the two waves will overlap each other and will seem to stand still. Producing a standing wave Two distinct regions on a standing wave can be seen. At certain points the rope won't be moving. That point is called a node. The point where the motion of the rope is largest is called the antinode. The nodes are locations of destructive interference where the two waves moving in opposite directions have opposite amplitudes. The crest of one wave and the trough of the other are at the same location. The antinodes are at locations of constructive interference where the two waves have both positive or negative amplitudes, that is, both are either crests or troughs. The frequencies that produce standing waves depend on the length of the rope and the velocity of the wave on the rope. The lowest frequency will have nodes at the two ends and an antinode in the center. The next higher frequency will have a node in the center and ends and two antinodes. At each higher frequency the number of nodes and antinodes increases by one. What is a load? An engineering term for force. How efficient are levers? The only place where friction can occur with a lever is at the pivot point. So, as long as friction is minimal there, the lever can approach 100% efficiency. What is a diverging lens? A diverging lens has at least one concave side. The shape of the lens causes the entering light rays to spread apart when they leave the lens. A diverging lens is often used in combination with converging lenses. Eyeglasses to correct nearsightedness use diverging lenses. Who discovered superconductivity? The creation of materials without resistance was thought to be impossible. But a Dutch physicist by the name of Heike Kammerling Onus, 1853-1926, proved it was possible in 1911. Onus lowered the temperature of different metals, including mercury, close to absolute zero. 
He then measured the electrical resistance of the materials at such low temperatures and found that mercury at only 4.2 Kelvin, minus 277.2 degrees Celsius, had zero resistance to electrical current. How do astronomers determine the temperature of the Sun? When iron is hot, you can feel the energy radiating from it. That radiation is in the form of infrared waves leaving the iron. When iron gets extremely hot, it produces a red glow and when it gets even warmer, it can take on a whitish glow. The temperature of iron and other objects can be measured by the amount of radiation flowing from it as well as by the light it emits. Scientists measure the temperature of stars and the sun by analyzing the color and brightness of the stars. From such measurements, astronomers have determined that the surface of the sun is approximately 5,500 degrees Celsius 9,900 degrees Fahrenheit. How can you reduce the coefficient of friction? One method is to use surfaces that have less ability to form chemical bonds. Teflon is one such surface. Another is to have a thin film of oil between the surfaces. The oil will prevent bonding of the atoms in one surface with those of the other. Oil or other lubricants can reduce the coefficient of friction to about 0.1 to 0.2. How do you measure weight? If you stand on a scale, the scale measures the upward force of the scale on your feet. According to Newton's third law, that force is equal to the downward force of your feet on the scale. Actually, there is a slight difference because of the rotation of Earth. If you stand on a scale in an elevator, you'll see that your weight changes as the elevator accelerates. When it is going up and increases its speed, the scale will record a larger weight. The same will happen when you are going down and come to a stop. When it slows while going up or speeds up while going down the scale will show a smaller weight. Newton's second law can explain these changes using the fact that a net force is needed to accelerate you along with the elevator. Note that you don't really need a scale to sense these accelerations. You can feel them in your stomach. Speed of light in a vacuum, see? Two hundred and ninety nine million seven hundred and ninety two thousand four hundred and fifty eight kilometers per second. What is acceleration? A Change in velocity divided by the time over which the change occurs, vector.
How is the brightness of light measured? There are two separate systems to measure the intensity of light. The first is a physical system that measures energy or power transferred. The second system measures the effect of light on the eye in other words. How bright we see the light. You are familiar with the what. It's the rate at which energy is transferred. The equivalent unit for light, the luminous power, is the lumen. If you look at the box a lamp comes in you'll find both the electric power it dissipates in watts. W, and the luminous power in lumens, Lm. For example, a 25W clear bulb emits 200 Lm. A 100W. Lamp emits 1720 Lm. A 60W halogen lamp emits 1080 Lm. Compact fluorescent lamps produce more light for the same power, a 25W lamp is rated at 1600 Lm. Light travels at slower speeds through mediums denser than a vacuum, such as air or water or glass. Light travels at about 225,400 km per second through water versus 299,792 km per second in a vacuum. The intensity of light depends on the degree to which the lamp spreads or focuses the luminous power. If the light goes into all directions it won't be as intense as it would. Be from a reflector spot lamp that reflects light to form a narrow beam. The unit in which light intensity is measured is the candela, CD. If a 100W, 1,720LM lamp could spread the light into all directions it would have an intensity of 137CD. But, if the same lamp were a spotlight, Concentrating all the light into a 30 degrees angle, then the intensity would be about 640 cd. As the distance between the lamp and the surface illuminated increases. The illuminance provided by the lamp decreases according to the inverse square law. Suppose you have a light luminous power of 1000 lm 1 meter, 3.2 feet, away from the surface. If you now move the lamp to 2 meters, 6.5 feet, away, the illuminance would be 1000 lm divided by the distance squared. Or V22. That is, V4 of the illumination at 1 meter. If you move the lamp to 3 meters, 9.8 feet, away. The illuminance would decrease to one ninth the original illuminance. Can a temperature be measured without contacting the object? As was described in the chapter on energy, when an object is hot it transfers energy to colder objects. If it is in contact with the other object the transfer is by means of conduction. But all objects at temperatures above absolute zero radiate electromagnetic waves in the infrared part of the spectrum. See the chapter on waves for a description of the spectrum. A hotter object radiates more energy this way. And so there will be a net transfer of energy from the hot object to cold objects around it. An electronic sensor can detect the infrared radiation and convert. 
the amount and wavelength of radiation it receives to a temperature. The sensors can be built into cameras that create a picture that shows the temperature of every location in the picture. Such a picture is known as a thermograph. An electronic thermometer within the thermostat in your home or office triggers. A switch that turns your furnace on or off, according to the temperature. What is a Bose-Einstein condensate? Quantum effects on a macroscopic scale exhibited by extremely cold gas of atoms. Boson particles like photons and gluons with integral spin. Are series or parallel circuits used in our homes? Each circuit, by itself, contains a series connection of a switch and lamp or appliance. The circuits themselves are connected in parallel so that they can be used independently. What is matter? Ancient people in many parts of the world believed that all matter was made of four elements. Earth, air, water, and fire. No matter how small an amount of material you had. You could not separate an element into a combination of other materials. What is rotational inertia? See moment of inertia. How is the pressure of a gas similar to liquid pressure? The pressure from a gas, acts the same way liquid pressure does. One difference between gaseous and liquid pressure is that gases are about 1 slash 1000 as dense as liquids and therefore apply less pressure. The second difference is that gases can be easily compressed while the compressibility of liquid is very small. Can the size of umbras and penumbras change? An umbra and penumbra exist wherever there are shadows produced by a large light source. When an opaque object casts a shadow on a surface close to it the shadow will be clear and distinct. Because it has a large umbra section and small penumbra. If, however, the object casting the shadow is closer to the light source. There will be regions on the surface where light from some of the source is not blocked by the object. Producing a smaller umbra and a larger penumbra. A lunar eclipse occurs when the Earth is directly between the Moon and the Sun.
who developed the ideas of conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. Isaac Newton, 1642-1727, Considering Collisions First described momentum as the product of mass and velocity, but he called it the quantity of motion. Energy took 150 years from the first statement of principles until the terminology was worked out. Collisions also inspired the Dutch physicist Christian Huygens, 1629-1695, who wrote that in the collision of two perfectly elastic spheres the sum of what we today call kinetic energy would not be changed by the collision. The German scientist Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646-1716, gave the name vis viva in 1695 to kinetic energy. But how could the conservation of vis viva be extended beyond elastic collisions? Finding the answer to this question took over 150 years. An important contribution was made by Benjamin Thompson, 1753-1814. Thompson was born in Massachusetts, but because he opposed the American Revolution he left for England and was knighted by King George III and given the title Count Rumford. While in America he spied for the British. While in England he spied for the French and was a counter-spy for the British. He moved to Bavaria now part of Germany, and became Minister of War, among other duties. Because he ran an orphanage and wanted to save money he studied heat and invented many items. Like an efficient stove and a coffee percolator. A long series of experiments led him to conclude in 1798 that thermal energy was nothing. More than the vibratory motion of what we know today as the atoms that make up the material. About 20 years before Rumford's work, the French scientists Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier, 1743 to 1794, and Pierre Simon Laplace, 1749 to 1827, showed that heat produced by a guinea pig after eating was very close to the heat produced when the food was burned. The development of steam engines by James Watt and others stimulated studies of the relationship between work done and heat produced and how to make engines more efficient. Around 1807 the word energy was used with its modern meaning. In 1842 a German physician, Julius Robert von Meyer, 1814-1878, proposed that all forms of energy are equivalent and that the sum of all forms is conserved. He wrote in general, qualitative terms. Although in later essays he included quantitative evidence based on the work done when a gas was heated but his work resulted in little recognition until the end of his life. About the same time, a British amateur of science, James Prescott Jowell, 1818-1889, began a series of experiments designed to determine the relationship between work done and thermal energy increase that resulted in heat transmitted to the outside. He explored electric generators, the compression of gases, and stirring water. His experiments lasted 18 years. As he continued to publish his results they were taken more and more seriously. 
the German physicist and physiologist Hermann von Helmholtz, 1821-1894, developed a mathematical description published in 1847 that showed precisely how energy was conserved in many fields including mechanics. Thermal energy and heat, electricity and magnetism, chemistry, and astronomy. With his results the scientific community recognized the great achievement of Rumford. Meyer, Jowl, and others and fully accepted energy conservation. What are shadows? Shadows are areas of darkness created by an opaque object blocking light. Whether created when someone puts their hand in the light from a movie projector, stands outside in the sunshine, or sees the moon move between Earth and the sun during an eclipse, shadows have always intrigued us. What determines the velocity of a wave? The velocity of a wave depends upon the material or medium in which it is traveling. Typically, the stronger the coupling between the atoms or molecules that make up the medium. And the less massive they are, the faster the wave will travel. All waves of the same type, transverse or longitudinal, travel at the same speed. For example, a sound wave in air at 0 degrees Celsius will travel at 331 meters per second. Regardless of the sound's frequency or amplitude, Electromagnetic waves can travel either through empty space or through material. Their velocity depends on the electric and magnetic properties of space or the material but not on frequency or amplitude. The velocity of water waves depend both on the properties of the water and on the frequency of the wave. <laughs> 